the lower Danube is frozen over, and for a hundred square miles, the reed plantations are partly submerged. Normally, the workers wait for the thaw, but the ice has stayed so long that a special type of cutter is employed to make a clearing. The reeds are tough osiers, long, flexible, seasoned sticks for which there's a great demand. They're tied up in bundles and stacked, ready for collection. But unlike corn, it isn't necessary to leave them in the open to ripen. They're already matured and fit for use. So the horse sleigh collects the reed harvest, sturdy river plants that cost little to cultivate but market well. They're used mainly for thatching and making mats, but they're pliable and can be easily woven. Reeds from the Danube are exported to most parts of Europe. Another river product is the eel, and one of the most interesting members of the large family of snakefish is the electric eel that's found in South American streams. Up to now, the electric eel has merely been regarded as a freak of nature, and nothing's been done about it. But an American scientist doesn't see why even an eel shouldn't work for its keep. So he attaches a positive belt to the fish's head and a negative belt to its tail, and the creature's behavior becomes perfectly shocking. In fact, every wriggle means a shock of about 500 volts, and it's discharged in one thousandth of a second. The current generated by the eel can light up an electric bulb and run a motor. And if you ate one, you'd run too. <laughs> 